Hi you guys, welcome to the weekly bump. I know I've been MIA for the past couple weeks with the weeklies due to technology problems and also just some things that I have going on um, spiritually as well. It was super important for me to step off the camera as much as possible and and just kind of process a lot of what's going on. Not only is the power of Uranus still in effect, uh, Mars and Aquarius coming in contact with the South Node is now coming online, and we have Gemini season, which for a Virgo is can be very, very unnerving because it's totally tapping into the other side of their ruling planet, which is like duh, so much vibrations and so much like mind activity and this craving for knowledge and curiosity, which is which is good, but it's just very different. And um, being in Eastern Europe, you know, I'm in Serbia right now, and, and being in Eastern Europe is powerful for me as an individual because it's right, my Neptune line on my ascendant runs right down Eastern Europe, down through Hungary, Serbia, Albania, and this whole kind of area here. So. I'm definitely in contact with really heavy Neptunian energies, um, which I think is why I actually feel very drawn to this part of the world, because it does open boundaries for me. It does, um, it really takes me to a new level of understanding. When I was in Budapest last year, I was having definitely a huge spiritual crisis, but at the same time, I'm so much so grateful for that experience. And in a way, I'm kind of having a very similar experience here a year, almost a year later. And uh, I have so much I really want to say. And I actually already started this video and I talked for like 20 minutes and I had to restart it because I think it was just too disconnected and discombobulated and it wouldn't be easy for you guys to follow. So let's do this a little bit of structure for me. Okay, let's talk about astrology first for a minute and then we'll run into the cards. And then if you guys want to sort of go through a philosophy kind of session with me, um, I'll do that after. So full moon in Sagittarius was yesterday, you know, again, like I said, all this agitation, but there's like two sort of energies working in tandem, the energy of Sagittarius and the energy of Taurus, right? Uranus and Taurus. So even though they're seemingly, they're different elements, they're not really connected in any way. They don't have the same ruling planet, but yet there's this calmness about both energies. A mature Sagittarian energy is one of ultimate wisdom. And like here, so here I am, I'm the moon. Okay, so I'm talking as the moon. Okay, child, <laughs> I understand the energies that you're dealing with, your desire to act, your desire to move and to change, but there's something that you don't see. So let me show you. And I think that that is what we needed. Taurus has caused this very chill undercurrent in spite of all of the shakeup on the surface. It's like you need to just chill out. You need to just relax, right? What is Taurus better at? Relaxing, right? Let's just chill out. Let's just relax. Let's, you know, let's take our time. There's no need to rush. Let's let the things come to us. We don't need to exert energy in going toward the thing. Doors are going to open, and I know they're going to open because I'm setting my mind in that way. Things are going to start appearing because I know they will because I've set my mind that way. And that's a wonderful thing about Taurus energies um, is that there's this innate understanding of vibrations. There's this innate understanding of manifestation that whatever we really put our mind to, we can have. Right, And that's so basic and it's so simple, but yet I think that is a concept that is lost on a lot of people still. Um, we have a Venus Grand Trine with Jupiter and Neptune. Jupiter and Neptune have been trining for quite some time. And I, and I highlighted it a couple weeks back or a few weeks back as this very creative quality. And both being very spiritual planets, there's this element of idealism 
the ideal world? What could we ideally have? And because that's still at play and Venus now comes in and really questions, gets you to question your true values, there is always a transformative quality with Neptune that I don't think people talk about <laughs> very much because as we dissolve our past belief structures, new structures need to be put in place. And Neptune is very subtle a lot of times. It's not this loud, powerful force like Pluto where it just comes in and crashes everything down. It just comes in and very subtly things just start to kind of shift out of phase. And suddenly that boundary or that belief doesn't quite exist anymore, but it does need to be replaced with something else as per the law of compensation, right? And so as one thing shifts out of phase, another thing is going to shift in phase. And hopefully that thing is positively oriented. It's positively polarized. And hopefully it's something that will get you to a more happy and content life, something, a life that is more tranquil and more serene, where, where you don't feel this need to keep searching so much anymore. Mars conjunct the south node, it's at four degrees of Aquarius, south node is sitting at seven degrees. We're gonna feel this progress check coming online, like, how are we doing? Where are you at? Have you really made the strides that you were hoping to make? Have you really made the changes? Have you, have you really begun to incorporate these changes into your life? Because as, as good as they are in your mind, they are not necessarily so good only in your mind. They must be applied. And, and therein lies the wisdom of the moon of Sagittarius, right? Wisdom is an act. It's an action. Sagittarius is a, a fire sign, right? You got to do something. It's not about just sitting and feeling or sitting and thinking. You got to put that to work so that you can begin to manifest the things that that wisdom can manifest, right? The changes in, in life and the changes in the lives around you. So where are you? Like really, where are you? And, and how far are you from where you really want to be? So Mars is also in a beautiful aspect. It's trining with the sun today too, which is here's your most powerful, most amazing planet. You know, the, the one that really we identify with in many ways the most, quote unquote, the most, not for everybody, but a lot of times. So here we have the sun in, in Gemini, it's trining with Mars in, in, a, in a fellow air sign. And so what, like what's stopping, what's stopping us? What's stopping us from acquiring these, these ideas? Uh, what's stopping us from these, what's stopping these ideas from truly formulating? For those of us who are feeling lost or feeling like I don't know where to go, Right now is a time where there's really not an excuse to be feeling that way because our, our minds are so incredibly active. And while we might not be able to see the steps, step one, step two, step three, I think right now we can truly have that end goal and see all this stuff really started at the beginning of the year when we had all the planets going direct. You know, we, there was nothing stopping us. There was good fortune all over the place. And we were chasing good fortune and we were chasing the happiness and the good things in life. And then Pisces season hit, bam. And we all sort of were like, <gasps> kind of taken aback, right? Because the sun and Venus and Mercury, they were all coming in contact with Neptune and Chiron. And it was like this really weird, dank energy, but it was a reset recalibration period for us. And now having kind of healed, hopefully from a lot of stuff prior, it's not just from, from March, but that was all highlighting stuff from before. And so we were able to really deal with that and we were able to move forward from that. So now there's really nothing stopping us, you know? And um, yeah, let's see what I write here. So with the, with the Venus grand trine, the Jupiter and Neptune, I had this note. There is a fight to release the old, but perhaps a slight fear because we are not sure of what to replace it with. So I kind of already said that. It's time for us to imagine a better world. 
a better life for ourselves and for the global community. Let's put these Gemini jitters to good use. If our mind is going to be going crazy, we might as well be thinking about things productive, right? Instead of thinking about what this guy that doesn't like you back is doing, let's think about how we can channel our energy to make a difference how we can learn more about love, how we can learn more about compassion, how we can stop this cycle of, of judgment, you know, judging others and I feel like these wanted to come out. See, this is the grounding, right? The groundedness of Taurus that that we really really are needing because without the groundedness of Taurus you guys I think a lot of us would have made a lot more like way worse decisions <laughs> Like I think it would have been off the charts if this Uranus transit was not in the sign of Taurus Thank God for that. We've needed it. We've needed to not do stuff right now the six of Cups is coming in and telling me it's so critical, it's so crucial for us to live in the moment. Um, it's so critical for us to I mean that's what the Buddhists try to do, right? That's one of the Buddhist philosophies. Don't think about yesterday because yesterday is an illusion. Don't think about tomorrow because tomorrow is an illusion. Think only about the moment and the choices that you are making today and, and really understanding the snowball effect that they really, really have. You know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine in Miami and um, I was, I think I did my last weekly bump there when I was there. Um, he has this, this real affinity for women. And he's very good with women. Women feel very, very, he has got a Venus moon conjunct in um, his fifth house and there was something that came to my mind you know and, and I, we were talking about his energy and going over his chart and stuff and he's like yeah you know he's like I didn't even know that I really had this energy I didn't know and so I'm only just now really learning how to how to use it and I, I think a lot of us have things like that, you know, because maybe he had been using it a little bit destructively, maybe, or maybe he was being a little irresponsible. I think he feels like, yeah, maybe I was a little irresponsible, you know, um, definitely someone that enjoys, you know, the company and pleasure of women, which is great. I mean, amazing. But the effect that we have when we touch someone's life, the effect that we have when we um, enter into someone's life, a simple smile or, or a touch of the arm or, you know, because we never really know where that person really truly is coming from and we don't know what energies they're under the influence either. You know, we don't know. We don't know their life story or their life path. So to really take the moment and to hold yourself responsible for the energy that you really bring to the table, the decisions that you make, to really ask yourself how that is of benefit how that is a benefit to the other person you know because if you're sitting here in the moment and you're daydreaming about the past what benefit is that having for you in the progress of your own life i think some of the most successful people in the world you know financially successful or or you know in terms of recognition or politics or whatever one of their modus operandi is be present be present with the people that you're with. Be present with the people and, and, and decisions that are at hand. You know, there's no sense in, in clinging to the past in any way, shape, or form. You can't go back there. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anymore. It's also important for you to offer a great deal of forgiveness towards yourself and maybe someone that hurt you or maybe someone that affected your life in a negative way to offer forgiveness so that you can live in the moment. See, we're not moving right now. And, and we've known that. I've been saying it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I wonder about our optimism, though. I do wonder about how optimistic we are. I feel like we're, we're not as optimistic and as positive as we could be for some reason there's something kind of holding us back from 
seeing all the possibilities. If you are waiting for someone, if you're waiting to hear from someone, it's probably not really in your best interest to connect with them at this point in time. It's probably going to be better for you to just kind of remain in your shell a little bit and continue to really focus on the things that are plaguing you. If anything, focus on, on your own self-improvement right now and not worry about what anyone else is doing. Queen of Pentacles comes out. She is the, the master of manifestation. She's the one that I say has the golden touch or the Midas touch. She is very, very good at putting her mind to something and actually making it happen. A lot of times people that have Jupiter in the fifth house like me, like I relate very well to the Queen of Pentacles energy. Um, people that have a lot of um, fifth house stuff for some reason I see as a Queen of Pentacles because it's like no matter what they put their hands on, no matter what they put their mind to, they have success in that area. Plain and simple. I mean, it's not even like a question. Like, yeah, you put your mind to something and you're gonna, it's gonna work. It's gonna be fine. And, and I think that's kind of a, a global kind of thing right now. It's just a matter of knowing and, and recognizing that we have that. We're all still a little bit on guard and I think that's okay. We are all still, I mean, we're still all kind of shaken up still and we're not sure what other people are gonna do. We might be dealing with some pretty shady people, and so, or we might have had to deal with shady people, people that were not honest and, and people who, who hurt us. And so, yes, our guards are very much up. Our boundaries are up, but I think in a very healthy way. I don't think that a lot of us are dwelling too much on things that we shouldn't be, be dwelling on. Um, what's this? Here's an element of forgiveness, a need for forgiveness. We're moving on, but we're standing still. We're changing, but everything is the same. It's the paradox. It's important to have faith in the energies at play. It's important to have faith that they are taking you where you really need to go. I'm gonna pull out more cards here, but I'm going to come back to this one because this is going to probably be the starting off point of my little philosophical rant that I have. Um, re I've really been wanting to, to say this stuff um, the past few weeks. I don't know if it's really worth it or not, but it's something I've been personally struggling with and maybe you'll, it'll get your mind going a little bit. Okay, we're going to end with this. We've got the Magician in Reverse and we've got the the death card so look guys people get really tired of uh, oh, i can't even tell you how many times in my comments i have people that are like when is this transformation going to be over when is this going to end it ends never this is an eternal process birth death and rebirth it never ends. It's constant throughout time and all eternity. So, so don't get tired. Don't get annoyed. Don't, don't get frustrated when tarot card readers and astrologers talk about transformation because it is the beauty of, of this life. The, the fact that we have the ability to change, that we have the ability to learn and to transform and to become something else, to become the butterfly, to become the phoenix, to become the eagle. That is our our sentient being right, right? Not our human right, but our soul's right to continue to learn, to continue to progress, and to always stay in motion. The Magician Reverse comes out. I do feel like you're dealing with, with a shady person or you're dealing with someone that's just really not on your level. And I've been talking about the separation between the high vibe and the low vibe people for months and months now. Again, I'm going to probably say it every week still, but it is becoming more and more obvious who is on your wavelength and who is not. A mere conversation, a mere greeting in the grocery store or whatever, and you're going to be like, yeah, that person's not on my vibe. Um, and people 
don't like to see people embracing change. You know, they, they don't like it. They don't enjoy when other people handle things more maturely because it is a reflection of how immature they actually are. And so they try to sabotage you or they try to hurt you or they, they try to pull you down in some way. And I, I don't think that you're really going to be phased by it because you're high vibe. High vibe people have no reason to be afraid. The high vibe people are people that will go to jail for their truth. They will die for their truth. They will literally do whatever it takes to ensure that they do not get pulled down ever again because they know the difference now. And so if you are dealing with someone who is a little bit manipulative right now, who is trying to get you to decrease your status, your newfound status, it's like no matter, no matter, it's not a problem. Just let them, let them do it. It's, it's not your responsibility, even though you may feel a responsibility, like, come on, it's so much better up here. Come on, like, let's go. Let, let's, let's vibe together. Let's do it all together. Because as, as you raise your vibrations, you, you do come into a greater, more intrinsic understanding of, of, um, the meaning of oneness. Sorry, I had to just make sure my microphone, my microphone was set up properly. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this with no audio again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a beautiful month. I think. I think we're we're headed in in a great direction on a, as a global community in general. Okay. Um, although I think we can expect some shakeups, of course. So let's talk about this for a minute. The sort of the paradox. You know, I've been I've been struggling. Oh, I'm gonna be looking down because of my notes, so I apologize. I'm not trying to alienate you. I just um, I'm feeling actually a little bit nervous to talk about this because it is something that I is the reason why I kind of pulled off and didn't do the weekly bumps. And it's the reason why I really stopped being active on Instagram. Um, and I had a lot of people actually message me lately, like, where are you? Is everything okay? What's going on? Like, we miss you. And what's really been going on with me has been a, a very real struggle with my ego and coming into a very real understanding of what that is. And for some reason, I have no idea why, but at the beginning of the year, I started seeing um, two figures a lot that really just like, whether it's like on Facebook or just randomly people would mention it. And these are two people that I, I was maybe a little too young. I never was like emotionally connected with them as a child in any way, shape or form. But the two people were Princess Diana and Mother Teresa. And just the past couple of weeks, I was like, okay, these two people have been like, it's been nonstop. Like you need to know who these people are. And so I was on Netflix the other night and I just happened to just be scrolling. I like not watching documentaries mostly um, on Netflix and I'm like, let's see what's, what's coming up. Let's see what Netflix is giving me. And, and right there, the very first one was this two-part series, two-part story of the story of Princess Diana. I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to really understand who this woman was because I, I really knew nothing about her. I remember when she died in Paris um, that night watching the news, but that was it. And so I'm, I'm like learning about how amazing this woman was in terms of her philanthropic efforts and in how she used her status to become a very genuine heart and, and a voice for a lot of people, people with AIDS, um, especially, and children especially, and, and how she would just like constantly be so charitable. And then you go to Mother Teresa and you start watching her speeches and, and you start watching her kind of life and you're like, oh my gosh, like these are the two, some of the two most amazing women that I don't think get nearly enough credit. I started going on to Google and I was like, who are the greatest spiritual leaders 
of human history. And it was like a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, a woman, a man, a man. It was like all these men. Mother Teresa was in there, so was Princess Diana. But I was like, how is it that women are not more significantly represented in, in the spiritual community? How is it that women are not more recognized like why is the dalai lama always a man the buddha every every religious mythology is always like a man right like why why is that and i was really bothered by that and i have been really bothered by that because it talks all and i could talk about the suppression of women like nobody's business but i'm not i don't want this to be about that specifically um because i was trying to get back to the ego and the ego of um, our spiritual community. Um, being on YouTube, being on social media, there's this constant competition and it's, it can be healthy. And I'm not going to say that people on, on YouTube, astrologers, tarot card readers, spiritual leaders, motivational speakers, of course they have really beautiful things to say. But the minute that those messages get convoluted with some sort of self-serving quality is the minute that I actually really start having a problem with it. Because as I'm watching Mother Teresa speak, like I cannot even come, I can't even handle the level of humility that she possesses. I mean, this woman won a Nobel Prize and like one of the first things out of her mouth was, this award goes to the poorest of the poor. Like she immediately kind of took herself out of the equation and said, this is not my work. You know, this is the work of, you know, she's Catholic, so the work of Jesus, the work of Christ. And I was like in tears watching that. I was like, holy cow, that's, that's probably one of the most noble things, you know, to just completely absolve oneself of, of credit and how much more wonderful the world could be or would be if we all just were a little bit more like that you know and with with people watching tarot and watching astrology it astounds me how people use use these energies and use these powerful insights as a hiding place they use it as a hiding place for their problems, you know, because they're hiding in the answers, they're hiding in the reasons why, but they're not using the tools properly. And I myself am also guilty of this. And it's again, something that I really came in contact with over the past few weeks was like, what good is astrology and tarot if you're not going to use it? And it warms my heart so much when I receive comments that are like, thank you so much for this guidance. I, I made this decision and this is what happened. It was just like you said, and, and thank you for, for that. That is what I think this whole thing is really all about. It's not about me being seen. It's, it's not about my face. It's not about anything, but it's not even about the cards. You know, one thing that always really would annoy me so much is when I would change my tarot cards and I would use different decks. And people would be like, oh, those cards are so ugly. Or, you know, they would pay so much attention to the cards. But what was lost on them was it had nothing to do with these stupid pieces of paper. What it was, was what those pieces of paper inspired me to say. And it was about the message, not the stupid cards, right? Like, I love my tarot. These are my guides. And, and, and I, I really owe a lot to my guides, but it's not about the cards. And, and um, I, I, I've always kind of was get, got so annoyed by that um, when I was changing my cards a lot because it has nothing to do with that. But then again, people, they're always looking for something. You know, they're always looking for something to not learn. They're looking for something to not progress and to not be better. And saying, okay, well, this is happening because Uranus is in Taurus now. And, oh, I just, I can't wait for this transit to be over instead of doing deep meditations and saying, how can I use this transit? How can I use this energy? This, this like quality of, again, and, and because of uh, the Aquarius stuff coming online with, with Mars and Aquarius and Uranus, 
this is about humanity, you know, so it's no wonder why I'm studying Princess Diana and Mother Teresa. Like, it's not lost on me. I get it. I'm going to use it, though, because it's guiding me in, in really beautiful directions, and it's guiding me to two people that I knew absolutely nothing about except for their name and that they were who they were, and that was all I knew. And, and yet now, I think I found two heroes, maybe, or... I don't know if that's really the right word, but two people, two inspirations, let's say that. <laughs> two people that have inspired me to make significant changes in my own day-to-day. -day. You know, I was reading in The Law of One, um, I finished that book, by the way. I'm reading The Essential Zohar right now, kind of getting prepared for the next book club book for any of you who are still watching this video at this time. <laughs> the Essential Zohar, I'm, I'm, I'm not so inspired by that book, but we'll still do it anyway. But I did finish The Law of One, and one of the things that really struck me with The Law of One was when they talk about lifespan. So for those of you who don't know, The Law of One, which I don't have with me here to show you, but... Um, it's a book that is a transcription of a channeled conversation, um, channeled, you know, telepathic conversation with a sixth density, sixth density entity who calls himself Ra, and I've also heard Ra Tear Air, and Ra is a representative of a social complex, and the message is one of love and compassion. And yet there are many questions that we humans have. And one of the questions was, you know, they talked a lot about the, the, the lifespan of ancient man and, and how in the Bible we read of people who lived for like 900 years, you know, and then they did say, and they asked. And, and, and Ra says, yes, you know, the human lifespan was meant to be much, much longer than it is now because that's how long it takes <laughs> to become self-aware. And, and because of the negative, negative polarized cultures, you know, and how it just got more and more and more negative, more power driven, more money driven, more slavery driven, and all of this, the human DNA, the human lifespan has degenerated, causing shorter and shorter lives, causing shorter and shorter um, health, healthy lives. And... When you think about it, you know, I think that if you are a spiritual person in, in this world, I mean, that will make a lot of sense, right? How long it would take. Like when you think of a 900 year lifespan, I'm thinking, okay, how many Pluto returns is that? Like we think the Saturn return is bad. Could you imagine a Pluto return and what the impact that would have on your life? That's at least three Pluto returns that you would have to go through. Can you imagine how many Saturn returns you'd have to go through? How many Neptune returns and, and um, you know, Uranus returns? You know, all these planets that we, we never get to really experience that. And how much growth is expected during these times. And so now we have a, a lifespan that is less than 10% of what it probably really should be and so we are dying as perpetual spiritual children, never really able to really grow, never really able to grasp the true lessons that life is really meant to bring us. Lessons of self-awareness, lessons of true consciousness. What does it mean to be a truly self-aware person? To be a self-master, what does that really truly mean? And I think that as we you know, come in contact with people who are much older than us, Still, there are people who are incredibly stubborn and incredibly childish, right? Because they still, too, have not gone through the process of transformation, as annoying as that, that is, right? And, you know, we, we do struggle a lot with the acceptance of our responsibility here because our responsibilities are so outwardly focused. It's so focused on, on the things we're supposed to do, money, jobs, career, buying a house, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this. But yet it's all just so ridiculous. And like when you start thinking about it, it's like laughable. Like how can you not be laughing 
at the ridiculousness of the human condition right now when we are so fully capable of just changing the way we live. And it seems so simple and yet so incredibly complicated all at the same time. Um, yeah, and, and the ego thing, guys, like this is my last little note that I have here, but I have been so troubled by a lot of the negativity on my channel. Um, last year at this time, I was in a very, very dark place, as I think a lot of us were. I was not an exception to that 2017 madness. And, you know, at that time, my self-love, self-respect was incredibly low and negative comments hit me so hard they really impacted me and they put me in really dark places, negative comments on my channel. And as I've grown over just the course of just one year, not even one year, but I've grown so much. And now what I see when I, when I experience negative comments on my channel is like such a, a sense of sadness and such a sense of frustration that there's a person out there who is actually willing to take the time to project out negative and hateful words toward another person and how darkly clouded their vision is. And yet I still feel a responsibility toward them to help them see the light in some way. Now, of course, some people will choose to never see the light and that's fine, That that's their problem but again again that's a a symptom of the human condition you know because of how we have shaped our world and how we are continuing to allow our world to be and um you know the self i don't remember did i talk about the self-serving quality the self-serving quality of the astrology and tarot community i struggle with so much because the minute that we start doing it for fame the minute we start doing it for recognition is the minute that it becomes self-serving and i think of mother teresa how easily it could have been for her to stand up on that Nobel prize podium and talk about you know thank you for recognizing my efforts but yet she completely abdicated her ego entirely and made the award an award of the oneness of her community and it just like gives me chills when I think about it, how, how simple and yet how complicated that it is. So just some, some things to really think about, just to give you some insight into what's going on in my mind and in my life, whether you really care or not, um, it's irrelevant. I, I hope that you can start seeing things maybe in a, in a different way. For those of you who are still on here 40 minutes later, I'm going to be announcing this in my June monthlies, but... I'm going to be back in Europe in uh, September, most likely. And I'm going to be doing like a little tour of just traveling from city to city. I'll most likely start in Paris. I'm not sure exactly. Um, and just meeting with you guys on like a one on one basis or setting up a little event. You know, I don't expect any more than like six or seven people if I'm lucky, if one person I'm lucky. Um, to just sit down one-on-one -on -one and really just talk about um, philosophical things like this and to talk about life and to talk about um, love and, and these things that I'm talking about right now and also tarot and also astrology and, and anything else that anyone can really bring to the table and I'm really hoping to connect with people in a very very real way because as beautiful as YouTube is to get out a message uh, it really is lacking the human connection um, you can maybe feel my energy a little bit, but I, I guarantee you that sitting down across the table from me is going to be a totally different experience and it's going to be different for me too. So I'm looking for that as well. So yeah, I'm going to leave you guys with that. I really wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Take care.